It's time for Package from China. Welcome to the Wicked Gamer and Collector. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. So in today's video we are going to talk about the Pandora's box. But this is the game console. Yes, nowadays we don't only have the, let's say, one player or two player arcade machines. No, we have game systems nowadays. So um, this video just wanted to do this quick unboxing, showing what are you going to get. But there was some interesting about the technical part or it's time for some nerdy talk. All right, here's some basic information about the specification of the mainboard. It's running on a Gortec A7 that is clocked on 1.5 gigahertz. It has a Mali 450 MP2. What I think is really interesting, it's got quite some RAM, two gigabytes, and it's sometimes so weird because some of them have one gig, some have two gigs. It depends on what kind of system you're going to buy. The resolution is not full HD, it's 720p. All right, so let's open it up and let's see where we're going to get. It is packed up very well, as you can see over here. Let's talk about the Pandora box itself. So let's start with this. First of all, when powering on, this is going to be light up very nice. So the casing, they are using it or reusing it for other versions. For example, I already did a review about the Pandora box 6 with the two arcade machine or arcade joysticks. This arcade machine has also the same casing. All right, here at the back, we're finding on our switch. Input for power, HDMI out, VGA out, audio out, volume control, and a small button for going into the settings. Here we have the U-Disc USB for some of the Pandora boxes when there are no games built inside, you need to use the USB. But this is very special because this is new. With previous models, with the Pandora Box 9, a lot of people were asking, can you add controllers? No, but this thing has been unlocked or software have been modified so you can use controllers. All right, so let's take a closer look at the manual because this thing comes with a very decent manual. Of course, with some basic explanations. This is for if you want to use the EDA connector, not... <laughs> you cannot use it, of course, simply because it's in closed casing. But here it comes. If you're using the original, this is the information you're going to need. All right. So this is the manual, it even comes with software, I'm guessing this is for the, when you're using the controller on your PC. Like always with these guys, you're going to get a very nice high quality HDMI cable. Here we have a small box, uh, and here it is. Here's our power supply, they're giving you a little bit of different power supply, normally we're having this basic power supply with a euro connector but now we're going to give you this version i really like it and what is also very important keep in mind if you order this product uh, or you want to interest in product ordering this product that you order the right power supply otherwise you're going to need to order it separately all right so the controls itself we're getting two of them and what's very interesting we're only having one dongle so if this means we can add four controls in total that is something we need to figure out in the future I must say the control itself is a ripper from the PlayStation 2 and of course not the quality, not the quality, like the original system controllers, but no, it's not bad at all, I like it. The D-pad, mm, it's not the best I have felt, but nevertheless, not bad at all. Battery compartment, two AAA batteries, what you don't need to forget, and as you can see, putting it back together is <laughs> a little bit annoying. Right, and here we have the on and off switch. Yeah, so if you forget to power it off, you are going to have some empty batteries. All right, let's connect it to the television and let's see what we're going to get if it comes to emulation and games. And let's see what we're going to get. Pandora Box 90, dream never end. Was by the way, the line of the Pandora Box 6. All right, so there is no intro. No, just a basic decal with no sound. Hmm. All right, so it's booted up. All right, in total we're having, spoiler alert, 2,500 games. But I can already tell you there are a lot of double games. All right, so we're not going to do 
an overview of the list, we're just going to give you a quick list. But what is the problem with the Pandora Box 90? So first of all, you can already see it. We have a lot of double games. Don't know why they call it the combo. Don't know why they call it hot. I have really no clue. Okay, I can... I understand when they are putting on the MVS version, I, uh, AES version. I can totally understand it and giving you this indication. All right, so still double, but it's a little bit different. All right, so what you can see over here with the full game list. There are a lot of different games on this device. The first thing that I'm noticing with the D-pad, it is very responsive. It works very nice. Very curious how this works with finding games. So this is more like a collection of two-dimensional games and some 3D games. And as you can see over here, we're having so many hex versions. All right, let's do a quick scroll because I'm searching for some games. Some of these boxes will contain Super NES and Mega Drive games. But as you can see already, it's not normal how many games we have. And But here we have the games that I wanted to show you. As you can see, there are some lost Mega Drive games. So that is pretty cool. I can already tell you these are Super NES games and not the arcade version. So in overall, it's a an, an small collection of 16-bit games on it. There is no way of adding new games. Here we have, it seems to be we're having different versions of Cadillac and Dinosaurs. But as you can see over here, beside the point we're having the plaza and all the other stuff, we're having a lot of double games over here. So that is what I really hate when I'm doing this. So to be honest, they're not 2,500 games. All right, so let's go to the end of the list because I wanted to show you this. And this is, these games are not always on the Pandora boxes. So as you can see here, they added even some PlayStation or three-dimensional games. All right, so Mortal Kombat 1 is the first one we're going to try because simply if this thing runs crappy, that means they are still using old software. All right, so we're having some Mortal Kombat 2, 3, and 4, but they are all PlayStation games. So you're more like cheating the system. But I did notice that they are focusing on through pl three players and four players. And as you can see over here, it's going to be a very easy search. Because at the end, we can find the games that are supporting more than two players. I only have two controllers at the moment. But I just wanted to show you. Alright, so let's see if the 9D supports more the Comet 1. Because I know of the Pandora Box 9 and 9S Plus has problems with it. Oh. It seems to be that it works just as great like with the Pandora Box 6. Hmm. Ow. Yeah, the buttons are... Okay, what just happened? Okay, when I'm pressing the shoulder buttons, this happens. <laughs> they messed up the controllers big time. <laughs> that was really bad. <laughs> but you're getting the point. All right, is the way we can go back. All right, when pressing the select button, it goes back to the main menu. All right, that's nice. I know we cannot quick load, quick save. I just wanted to do the quick Mortal Kombat testing. But before we're going to play some more games, let's go to the testing. I think you need to mute the sound, otherwise we're going to get the copyright strike. All right, so let's talk about the settings menu, because when you're using this thing like in game system, there are a lot of features you're not able to use. For example, the EO test. This is just if you're using this thing or this mainboard in a real arcade machine. Yeah, so in other words, it's pointless. Custom buttons, you can swap some buttons if you want. But I think the biggest and interesting thing is when you go into the system configuration. Here you can swap some things like credit settings, how to go back to the main menu, and that kind of things, and quality optimization. So it's more like this filter. There's no 4x3 or scan line option with the Pandora Box 90. They still didn't add it. And you can here activate or do something with the normal joystick. 
All right. That's it. That's the only thing you can basically change. All right. Save settings and reboot because I don't want to have the filter. The main reason why I wanted to use Tekken 1 is very simple. With the Pandora Box 6, they messed it up. Oh, I was thinking it doesn't do anything, but they messed it up with the background sound and they, they still didn't fix it. So basically, they added the same game with the same problem on the Pandora Box 9. The only thing is, the only difference, we cannot change the game. So we're basically screwed with this version. So what I did notice every time I'm booting up for example, PlayStation games, I need to press the start button, otherwise my controls doesn't work at all. Let's see how they didn't map the buttons. This kick. Alright, so basically they messed it up with the button features. It's not like the original PlayStation layout. Pretty damn annoying. Alright, let's do another round. What? How did they... But so far so good, it looks nice and it's playable. Alright, this is the first time that I have seen this game on a Pandora box. And this is a PlayStation game by the way, so... Oh, there's music. It didn't mess the part up. Alright, something is happening. Yes, something is happening. I think it's loading time. Hmm. That took freaking forever. All right, loading time. Loading time, take forever. Loading time. Gonna shit my pants. Loading time. Ah. Here I go. All right, let's see the deep pass. Ooh, not bad at all. The deep pass works nice. It's not perfect. Don't get me wrong. Alright, so I'm a little bit done with PlayStation, so let's try some other arcade games. Alright, first part we're going to play with the D-pad. I must say the D-pad is functional, but I don't like it if let's say one of my favorite D-pads. Compared with an original PlayStation controller, it works not that great. It feels very sturdy, very stiff. And you know I'm still talking about the D-pad. Huh? What happens when I'm pressing the shoulder button again? Wow! So when I'm pressing the shoulder button, this happens. <laughs> oh, that's messed up. I'm just using now the analog stick because I hate the D-pad for a very long time. An analog stick is not bad at all. Hello? No. There was no super move over there. Ah! There it is. Alright, so I just wanted to show you this. This is the hack version. It says Boss Edition. Okay, let's see if something happened. Oh, indeed! Oh, really cool. Okay, this is really cool. See, and this is something I can appreciate. They're having this, let's say, extra edition where we can play with the final boss. Ooh, this guy looks really sick. 
very cool. Okay, so if I want to go forward and jump, that is really a big issue with this controller. So even playing more and more with this controller, I can tell you it doesn't make me happy. No idea how to go to super moves. Whatever. All right, let's play a 16-bit games. Let's play some 16-bit games. I'm very curious what we're going to get. The sound is off. The sound is really off. The soundtrack doesn't sound very wrong, but it's more like the sound effects. Yeah, that sounds really weird. What happens when I'm pressing the shoulder button again? <laughs> it starts working everywhere. <laughs> hmm. That works. It's really funny that they added this game. Because Street of Rage 2 is one of my favorite games. I think everybody needs to play this. So that they added this, that is very cool. But the emulation is not perfect. And still, it's strange. It's very strange that the emulation itself is not perfect. If you look at Android devices, but guys, basically this thing runs on Android, I know for sure. But then you're thinking, if you look at a basic emulator on the phone, it works, it emulates the game so well that the soundtracks are almost perfect. Almost. This sounds like crap. Hmm. Sounds not bad. You still see a lot of screen tearing, weird stuff going around and with emulation. I mean, if people who really hate the widescreen, yeah, sorry guys. Nothing to do about it, there's nothing to do about it. Alright, so this is what you're going to get with the Pandora Box 9D game system. So it's basically in Pandora Box 9D that they enable the controller function. So with the controller function, it's cool, you can play with a controller, people don't really like the arcade stick, but still want to play the arcade games. But at the end, if you look at how it works, it works fine, the controllers are not perfect, I wasn't surprised by it. You can always choose the wireless and the wired controllers, and you can even use some arcade sticks if you want to. And I'm talking about the Chinese arcade stick from the 3H and 3A game story, or the official Pandora book story, you want to call it. Just keep this in mind, the controller mapping is a little bit strange. Uh, for example, we are, I am used to using the X or the circle and now we're using the triangle, for example, if you're going to do this in side-by-side -side comparison with the control layout in the play from the PlayStation. So it's, it's totally messed up, but all right, you're going to get used to it eventually. But it, this is what you're going to get with the Pandora Box 90. It's not perfect at all. Um, it doesn't make any sense that you're using the Pandora Box 90 for this because 90 is flawed in many ways. They, by the way, fixed the Mortal Kombat part. So that is very good, but still missing out 4x3 ratio and a lot of these things. So let me know what you think of this. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell, become one of the Wicked family, and don't miss out any videos. So it will be great to see you in the next one.